Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today I'm going to be reviewing my top 25 best NHL prospects after the 2022 NHL draft. Now, we have seen a couple of really interesting drafts recently with 2021 and 2022, giving us some really interesting high-end talent. But who do I see as the best NHL prospects right now and which prospects make today's top 25? Watch till the end for the complete prospect rankings and make sure that subscribe button if you are new. 50% of you guys aren't subscribed. So if you like hockey and prospect content, this channel is the place to be. Now, before we get into the prestigious top 25 list, I also want to give five honorable mentions to guys that just missed the top 25 tier. But we're going to go to a guy that was just outside of things to start off with the honorable mentions in my boy, Logan Stankoven, who I was extremely high on going back in the 2021 NHL draft. For instance, in my actual rankings and the final rankings, I had him 16th overall on my board. And that ranking continues to look pretty solid. And he was eventually drafted 47th overall by the the stars in the second round in 2021, but I think he's continuing to make that pick look absolutely silly. He is short at five foot eight, but plays such an intense and and stylistic game, and I feel like he plays like he's six foot four while also bringing some great smarts and some great skill to boot. And this last year in the WHL got 104 points in 59 games and was such a great leader and 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 in my opinion one of the best one of the best prospect had one of the best prospect years I think we've seen across the entire board and deserves to get mentioned here. Going on to my second honorable mention, I have another player from the WHL and Fabian Lichel, who ended up being selected 21st overall by the Boston Bruins. I was also pretty high on him uh, back in that 2021 draft. Not as high now, but I still do like Lichel quite a bit. At 5'10", he ended up going to the WHL this last year, playing with the Vancouver Giants, and in 53 games, had a solid rate, 22 goals, 40 assists, 62 points, and was absolutely unbelievable in the playoffs, in my opinion, taking big steps and got 21 points in 12 games. Not as good as Logan Stankoven's year, but I still think pretty underrated, and also I still think a pretty underrated prospect in the entire NHL. Then going on to the third honorable mention, I have Caden Gooley of the Montreal Canadiens, a player that's taking some big steps from where I initially had him back in 2020. I didn't hate him by any means, but I didn't see him as a top 16 prospect at any point uh, back then, but he has taken some big steps in his overall consistency and the offensive projection that he brings at six foot two, 201, of course was drafted 16 overall by the Habs, and this last year in the WHL was a point per game with Edmonton with the Edmonton Oilers Kings, it was around that rate as well with Prince Albert, with Edmonton got 25 points in 25 games and in the playoffs had a very respectable 16 points in 19 games, for a defenseman who's also usually a little bit more on the physical side and defensive side, to be able to bring that offense and to be able to bring that creativity that I've always a little bit lacking back in 2020, he's improved quite a bit in his fundamental offensive skill, and to me this is a guy that can be a solid middle pairing physical cold guy that just takes that next step and is solid in really every single avenue. Then going on to the fourth the honorable mention here. We're going to go to another Swede, just like Lee Sell in Noah Osland, who was a top 10 prospect, in my opinion, in the 2022 draft. Ended up going 16th overall to the Sabres, and in my opinion, is still a fantastic pick by them. He will be a project for sure and needs to bulk up and needs to get a little bit more uh, sturdy, especially in the neutral zone. But to me, this is a guy that brings such high octane pace and such a great skill ceiling to his game. And this last year, he played some, in the, played some games in the SHL, mostly played in the Junior 20, though, where in 32 games, he got 9 goals, 33 assists for 42 points. And to me, this is a guy that even though he will be a while before he's in the NHL and, and totally there, to me, he has one of the better potentials of the 2021 draft and just missed out on the top 25. Then going on to the last honorable mention, I have Sebastian Costa of the Detroit Red Wings, who is selected 15th overall, the highest goal he selected in the 2021 draft. And at 6'6", six 209 six, pounds, there's still so much potential there, in my opinion. This last year in the WHL was kind of interesting. Interesting. There was a lot of inconsistencies, but overall in 46 games, although it wasn't up to the 2021 level, it was a much bigger sample size, and he ended up getting a 913 save percentage, and I thought was pretty incredible in the playoffs where it mattered most, getting nine, a 919 save percentage in 19 games and looking absolutely terrific. To me, there's still still so much to unlock with Kosa, and if he's able to really use that size, if he's able to 
get some better positioning as well. This is a guy that I think could be one of the better goaltenders in the NHL and a great starter of the future for the Red Wings. Now let's get started with the top 25 best prospects in the NHL. And let's start off the list with the Anaheim Ducks and their prospect pool. And let's start off with their second round pick in 2021 in Olin Zellweger, who has made some absolutely humongous strides since he was drafted. And even when he was in his draft year, I did like him quite a bit, but he's taken some big next steps and projects one of the best offensive defensive prospects right now in the NHL. Now at five foot 10, he was ultimately drafted 34th by the Ducks in the first couple of picks in the second round of last year's draft. And I thought that was around the range he should have gone back then. But he's been having really just an unbelievable last year. And this last season in 2022 with Everett of the WHL in 55 games as a defenseman, by the way, he had 14 goals, 64 assists for 78 points. And in the playoffs, got nine points in six games to boot. Also played an AHL game in the playoffs and got an assist for one point. He'll be back with uh, WHL with the ever at silver tips probably in 2023 but to me Zellweger is is such an interesting player because he was one of the youngest guys back in the 2021 draft and is still 18 years old by the way still has not turned 19 and just considering that production considering the creativity on the ice and and, and just the the bombastic offensive skill he has alongside uh, Jamie Drysdale and Pavel Mintukov the Ducks offensive decor is going to be insane but let's go on to number 24 and the 24th best prospect in the NHL and to me I'm going to go to the Minnesota Wilds prospect pool and go for Jesper Wallstedt. Now to me uh, Wallstedt is is in an interesting position this last year I thought played pretty well in the SHL and at six foot three, 214 pounds was the 20th overall pick by the Wild back in 2021 and last year in the SHL in 22 games got a 1.98 goals against average and a .918 save percentage. To me I mean we've seen with, 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 with Wallstedt how he continues to just have this monumental output. You never see a goaltender do what he did in his draft year, getting a 908 save percentage, getting great responsibility in his draft year in the SHL. And then the next season with a 918 save percentage. Again, this guy is 19 years old and he's already one of the better goaltenders in one of the best men's leagues in the entire world. He'll be going to Iowa next year and I'm really excited to see how he progresses because to me, he is the best goaltending prospect in the NHL right now and will continue to make waves. Now going on though to number 23, let's go to the Buffalo Sabres prospect pool next up and I'm going to go with JJ Paterka. Now going back to when he was drafted, he was drafted 34th overall in the 2020 draft, so a couple years before and to me going back to that selection, it was one of my favorite picks in the early second round that year. To me I had him as an early, uh, maybe in the early 20s type pick back in that range in 2020 but he's taken some massive steps and way bigger steps than I ever really considered him to be at this point. I mean, he's uh, he's 20 years old and this last year in the AHL, he was absolutely monstrous. In 70 games, got 28 goals, 40 assists, 68 points, and was legendary. I mean, you go back to the DEL stats in his draft year, 11 points in 42 games. He took a good next step in 2021 where in 30 games, he got 20 points. But I don't think anybody really expected him to be as dynamic, as creative, as amazing offensively as he was. And to me, you combine that with really strong IQ in the defensive zone, and to me, this could be one of the better overall players for the Sabres as soon as maybe even next year. We'll see where he progresses, but the sky is now the limit for Paterica. Now moving on to the next spot here, and let's go on to number 22, and let's go on to the Blackhawks' recent draft pick in Frank Nazar. Now, to me, Nazar is an interesting selection, 13th overall, and to me, a slam dunk pick to make. At 5'9", another shorter player, but again, kind of like Logan Stankoven a little bit, has great motor to his game and always puts in 100% and kind of plays like he's much bigger. You combine that with just such silky offensive skill, and to me, there's such a great ceiling with this player. I mean, in the USDP this last year in 56 games, got 28 goals, 42 assists, 70 points, and in the World Juniors, nine points in six games and looked incredible. Now going on to the last spot outside the top 20, let's go back to the Buffalo Sabres prospect pool and let's go on to Jack Quinn. The first pick for the Sabres back in the 2020 draft, eighth overall, has progressed about as well as you could possibly have hoped. This last year in the AHL for Rochester, in 45 games, got 26 goals, 35 assists, 61 points, looked amazing offensively, did take a step behind in the playoffs, two assists in 10 games played. But to me, Quinn should likely be a big part of that power play, a big part 
part of that offense next year and one of the prospects for the Sabres really taking that next step and graduating. But to me, when it comes to Quinn, although a lot of my problems with him initially haven't been totally solved, he's still one of the better offensive producers, one of the more creative players in the offensive zone. And if you put him alongside a great centerman, he just provides results. And I think for the Sabres, that is exactly what he'll do. But now let's start off the top 20 with the Arizona Coyotes 2021 first rounder in Dylan Gunther, who's progressed pretty solidly up to this point since his draft year. At 6'2", 181 pounds, I still love the offensive ceiling with him. And this last year in the WHL really strut his skills, where in 59 games, he got 45 goals, 46 assists with, for 91 points. And in the playoffs, had 13 goals, 21 games, and was a huge part of that beast Oil Kings team in 16 playoff games. To me, just that dual threat offense that he provides, especially in the power play, is so lethal. And even though there is still a long ways to go, I think physically, in a way he uses his body, I still think at the same time, you have such a great offensive ceiling there that I think mean, he'll find his way in the NHL and do quite well with Arizona. Next up, going on to number 19, I'm going to go on to another Buffalo Sabres draftee in Matthew Savoy, who of course was drafted ninth overall by the Sabres in 2022 and is still one of my favorite prospects to watch in the 2022 draft at 5'9", another shorter player. And even though um, it's kind of the opposite of a Logan Stankoven, I do still think Matthew Savoy does provide some effort, does provide, I think, a pretty decent defensive game and an underrated one. And you combine that with, I think, the really underrated playmaking game and the, and the, the, the ability to just make plays out of little tight in, in close space. And to me, Savoy could be a really interesting player. You could you could put alongside a, a, maybe a slower, maybe more methodical forward and I think get a lot out of. And this last year in 65 games with the Winnipeg Ice, got 35 goals, 55 assists for 90 points. And I thought played really, really well. Next up, going on to number 18, I'm going to go on to the first Devils draft pick of this list in Alexander Holtz, who has progressed well and in the AHL this last year did pretty solidly in my opinion, but at six foot, 194 pounds, one of the better goal scoring prospects of this list at age 20, was seventh overall by the Devils in 2020. And this last year in the AHL in 52 games, got 26 goals, 25 assists for 51 points. Now, one thing that I think has really progressed when it comes to Holtz, I know I just said he was one of the best goal scorers of, the, of this list, but I think that playmaking side of things, I feel, uh, side of things, I feel like he's always had a really solid playmaking game to him when, when he's a little bit less selfish, when he's a little bit more uh, of, a, of a patient player. And we've seen him kind of expand that side of his offensive game, especially again this last year in the AHL. And to me, this is a player that's knocking on the door and I'm hoping we'll get some pretty sizable NHL time this next year. Next up, going on to the number 17 spot. Let's go on to the LA Kings prospect pool. And next up, I have Brant Clark of the Barry Colts, of course, and was drafted eighth overall in the 2021 draft. And this last year in the OHL in 55 games was the cabin for, for the Barry Colts and got 11 goals, 48 assists for 59 points. Now, to me, there is still some problems with that physical projection, how he's going to face that pro level. But at the same time, the way he sees the ice, the way he's able to make plays within pressure, to me, he's a guy that could be one of the best playmaking defensemen in the NHL if that ceiling does really pan out. Next up, though, let's go on to number 16, the player just outside the top 15. I'm going to go to an, another Anaheim Ducks player in Mason McTavish, who, of course, was drafted third overall in the 2021 draft. And even though I still think it was a little bit high for him, I still think Mason McTavish provides a lot that the Ducks are going to love. At six foot one, 207 pounds, is one of the most physically imposing players with his style of play, as well as what he's able to do on the ice. I mean, this last year with Hamilton in the OHL, got 24 games played, 14 goals, 26 assists, 40 points, and in the playoffs was an absolute monster, where in 19 games got 16 goals, 13 assists for 29 points. To me, when it comes to when it comes when it comes to McTavish, he's one of the more clutch, one of the more interesting players when things get heavy. He's a guy that can really, I, I think, could play in the NHL right now, at least when it comes to that physical pressure. He can really get dangled through everything. And you combine that with, in my opinion, one of the better shots in, in this top 25. And to me, there's a well-rounded player here that will be just a solid top six guy for the Ducks for a very long time. Next up, let's get the top 15 started. And next up, let's go on to the most high profile Blue Jackets draft pick as of the 2022 draft in David Yurichek. Selected sixth overall by the CBJ. And at six foot three, 190 pounds, there's a really interesting project here as a great shooting, great physical defenseman. Although I do still think he has a ways to go, there's a great blueprint here. And of course, this last year in Czechia in 29 games, got five goals, six assists, 11 points. He's a player that is knocking on the door. And if the 
and the Blue Jackets do want to bring him to North America, I think that could be pretty solid for his game. But to me, this is going to be just a solid third, second defenseman that's reliable, that's solid, and can bring some offensive talent when he needs to. But going on to number 14, let's go on to still, in my opinion, a little bit of an underrated prospect still in Marco Rossi. Now, I feel like people tend to kind of forget just how good Marco Rossi can be. At age 20, he was the ninth overall pick by the Wild back in the 2020 draft. And considering the health that he's had to go through, considering how bad his his his, his situation was with COVID just a year and a half ago, to me, it's kind of crazy just how good Rossi still is. And this last year with the Iowa Wild in 63 games, got 18 goals, 35 assists for 53 points. Now, it's not as amazing as a player like Jack Quinn, but to me, I feel like Marco Rossi maybe had to deal with a little bit less, well, or had a little bit less in terms of teammate quality, as well as also, I still think playing really, really well and maybe even up to Jack Quinn level, just not getting the points to really back it up. But to me, this is a player that I'm hoping will be a big part of the Wild this next year, and I'm hoping will start to turn a page in his NHL career. Now, going on to number 13 next up, let's go on to another player that, that I thought was a pretty solid pick in the 2020 draft in Cole Perfetti. Of course, at age 20, is progressing solidly and was the 10th overall pick by the Jets in 2020. It's still an amazing pick in my opinion. And this last year played both in the NHL and the AHL and in the NHL got 7 points in 18 games and the AHL got 15 points in 17 games. To me, I'm still a bit worried about how the Jets are, are trying to deploy him. I, I think for his situation, it, it's best if he's on the NHL because I think he can handle it. But we'll see what they end up doing full time with him in 2023 because I think that really projects him interestingly. But I hope to see him with the Jets full time this next year. Now going on to number 12, let's move on to another skilled forward here in Kent Johnson, who has made some good strides, I think in his overall game since he was drafted, of course, fifth overall by the Blue Jackets in 2021, and of course has played a little bit of NHL games this last year, getting three assists, three points in nine games, and I thought it looked pretty okay. Also played in the Olympics and of course the NCAA, and the Olympics got five points in five games, and the World Championships got seven points in 10 games, and with the University of Mich Michigan got 37 points in 32 games. Games, and in my opinion, it was a lot well, a lot more well-rounded offensively, and really brought more of a pro game this uh, this year than he did in his draft year. And I'm hoping to see that again full time with the Blue Jackets. But we'll see how much playing time he gets. I'm really hoping he's used in the power play though, and used in offensive situations because there's so much skill and so much high octane offense to get out of him. But going out of the last player outside of the top ten, let's go on to another Jets draftee in Brad Lambert, who of course I'm still very, very high on. Ended up going 30th overall by the Jets back in, of course, the 2022 draft, but I still consider him as one of the better prospects in the 2022 draft, and you consider what he can provide, what he can bring. He's still, in my opinion, the best skater of the draft, has one of the best pace of the draft, has one of the biggest skill ceilings of the draft, and you combine that all together, and to me, I'm betting on that working out, and considering the Jets system, if they give him playing time, that's the type of offensive system that, hopefully, if Rick Bonus is gone by the time that Brad Lambert comes in the fold, I think could develop him quite well, but we'll see what happens. I think a lot has to go right still for Lambert to prove himself as a top 12 prospect, but I still consider with that ceiling, there's so much talent there. But now getting inside the top 10, kind of along the same lines as Marco Rossi, a prospect that in my opinion is getting pretty underrated. Next up, I have William Eklund of the San Jose Sharks, who of course was drafted 7th overall back in the 2021 draft. And to me, I don't really see him getting as much attention as he deserves, mostly because I think this last year in the SHL wasn't amazing by any means. Of course, in his draft year, he got 23 points in 40 games. And this last year in the SHL, got tw in 29 games, got only one goal, 14 points. But in my opinion, he was really really badly snake bitten this last year in the SHL and from what I saw he was still dominating especially a lot on offense and to me there's still a lot that projects well and I absolutely love what I saw in the games that he did play with the Sharks where he got four assists in nine games and I thought looked pretty amazing for a player just coming out of the SHL and and doing what he did he'll it's listed that he'll be in the AHL next year which I think will be a really great fit but to me Eklund still provides one of the best one of the best brains in this list and one of the better offensive ceilings when you combine that passing game, that slickness with it, and in my opinion, still a really good shot. But let's go on to number nine, and I also, I guess, forgot to mention, but uh, I think it is worth mentioning for another honorable mention, if if you are going to ask about it, I would say like maybe 31st overall be Adu Radu. Um, I, I, I was super close to including him as one of the honorable mentions, but he's right there banging on the door. So he could be on the list maybe as soon as next year. But let's go on to number nine and the ninth best prospect on the list, and let's go on to 
to Jake Sanderson, who is one of the more older prospects, I guess, ten, or maybe not older, but one of the more uh, interesting prospects. I mean, especially going back to the 2020 draft, there's not that many 2020 prospects still on this list, which is pretty crazy to think about. But, of course, was drafted fifth overall by the Sens back in the 2020 draft, and at six foot two, has progressed really, really well since he was drafted. Of course, has had a couple of really interesting seasons in the NCAA, and this last year was above a point per game for North Dakota, getting 26 go uh, points in 23 games. And to me, when it comes to Sanderson, I think we've seen just a big evolution in his offensive ceiling. That was really the biggest problem, in my opinion, with Sanderson going back to his draft year, was I didn't see many elite traits there, but he's really developed his his decision making, he's really developed his, his, his passing in pressure, and to me, that's allowed a lot more scoring opportunities and a lot better of an offensive game. And with the Sens next, next year, he'll likely be in a pretty big position on the defense, and I think he will float quite well and do solid in year one. Now, moving on to number eight, though, let's go on to another high-profile defenseman, this time in Simone Nemetz, who, of course, was drafted second overall by the New Jersey Devils in the 2022 draft, and in my opinion, is going to be such a great fit for that future. This last year in Slovakia, got in 39 games, one goal, 25 assists, 26 points, was amazing in the playoffs, was pretty great in the World Championships from what I saw, pretty great in, in, in the Olympics from what I saw as well, and to me, when it comes to Mets, he brings just one of the more interesting and one of the best one of the best transitional games in the entire list. He's just a guy that loves to create pace, loves to get pucks up the ice and do it effectively. And to me, this is a guy that alongside Jack Hughes, alongside that, that Devils group is going to be so perfect and will rack up those points in the NHL level. Next up, going on to number seven though, and the seventh best NHL prospect. Let's go on to another defenseman. This time though, in Simone Edmondson, of course, of the Detroit Red Wings, sixth overall in the 2021 draft. And there was some concerns, in my opinion, with, with Edmondson. I still ranked him pretty high, I believe seventh in my rankings back in 2021. I still did love the potential of his skating and, and some of the offensive skills that he was providing. But in my opinion, there were some big problems with the decision making. And I think we saw that really take an evolution and really just get a lot more refined this last year. And you were able to see the results in the SHL this last season in 44 games. He got two goals, 17 assists, 19 points. And you combine that with his great skating, his amazing work ethic in the defensive zone. And to me, this is a player that will be one of the better defensemen uh, in the NHL someday. And especially with the Red Wings alongside Maurice Sider and, and William Wallander and some of the other defense group. He's going to fit in so naturally and be one of the best youthful defensemen in the NHL. Next up, going on to number six, and maybe one of my hotter takes, I guess, but if you consider where I had him in my draft rankings in 2022, it really shouldn't surprise you too much. At number six, and the sixth best prospect in the NHL, I have Uri Slavkovsky. Now, again, this isn't this isn't a slight against Slavkovsky. I still think he's going to be a really amazing prospect. And you consider some of the prospects that are right behind him, like Simone Demetz and, and Simone Evans, and who I think are going to be some of the best defensemen in the NHL someday. It's still really high praise to have Slavkovsky this high, especially considering how solid the top end of the 2021 draft is, but we'll get into that in a second. To me, when it comes to Slavkovsky, he just brings great, great overall presence, and you combine that with his physical play, you combine that with how he's able to shield pucks and create offense out of nothing. And to me, this is a player that sk skates decently, has a good brain to him, and will be a great power forward top six player that can also weave his way through opponents and make smart plays a lot of the, of the time. And to me, I think for the Habs, he's going to be a great player and a fundamental part of that four group too. But let's start the top five out, of course, with Logan Cooley, who was drafted third overall by the Coyotes, and I had second in my draft rankings in 2022. And we've got over Cooley quite a bit, but considering how young he is and how interesting he is offensively, he provides one of the best ceilings, if not the best ceiling of the 2022 draft. And this last year in the USDP in 51 games, got 27 goals, 48 assists, 75 points. And in the U18 World Juniors was a beast, 10 points in six games played. You combine this with elite skating, an amazing playmaking presence, and the ability to create such great pace and enter the zone really effectively. To me, he'll be a not franchise player for the Cavs, but a player that leads in a lot of the right ways and hopefully is a face of the franchise for the Coyotes for a very, very long time. If he does develop well, the Coyotes will have a great first line center on their hands. Going on to the fourth best prospect in the NHL, though, let's go on to the guy just slightly ahead of him in my personal rankings in Shane Wright, who, of course, we talked about a lot. But to me, the differences between Wright, Cooley, and Slavkowski are pretty razor thin. And that, I guess, goes into the list with them being six, five, and four, respectively. But to me, Shane Wright was still the best prospect in the 2022 draft, even if that those margins aren't that big what 
whatsoever, but I still love the IQ. I still love what he can provide with the two-way game, and I still think there's a really underrated shooting and and, and mechanical uh, offensive game there, and even though I don't think he'll be a superstar by any means, he'll be in a pretty great top six position with the Kraken, and we'll obviously get into him in a little bit, but he has a really good partner center-wise for the future with Seattle. Now, let's go on to the top three, though, and the top three best prospects in the 2022 draft. To give you just a little bit of a spoiler, all of these next three guys are from the 2021 draft and really proving to progress amazingly. Going on to the third spot, though, I'm going to go with Luke Hughes of the New Jersey Devils. Fourth overall, and in my opinion, that was a great place to get him exactly where it had him in my rankings in 2021. And considering he was one of the youngest prospects of the 2021 draft, to me, there was such a great ceiling back then, and it continues to be even higher. To me, one of the biggest problems with Hughes, though, was maybe some of the decision-making defensively, and I think we saw him take a little bit of a step there this last year in the NCAA. Nothing amazing, but enough progress to where I'm more confident in his defensive game rounding out, but this last year in the NCAA, in his freshman season, in 41 games, got 17 goals, 22 assists, 39 points, and in the World Championships, looked great, 4 points in 10 games for the U.S., and he's one of the best skaters on this list, one of the most dynamic and offensive players with, with the creativity, with the brain, with the way he's able to weave and, and out deke opponents, especially alongside the blue line. This is a guy that's going to love to get in tight, going to love to create offensive chances and high danger ones too. And again, going alongside Nemetz, going alongside Hughes, he's your broad, uh, Holt, so many offensive weapons in New Jersey, he's going to fit right at home. But now going on to the top two prospects in the 20, uh, in, in, in I guess the 2021 draft, but in, in the rankings as well after the 2022 draft. Let's go on to number two, and I would say for these top two prospects, it's pretty much just a, just a slight difference, but at number two, I'm going to go with Matty Beneers, my boy, my favorite prospect of the 2021 draft, and of course, was drafted second overall by the Kraken, and in my opinion, has shown everything that he needed to and more this last year in the NCAA, and is going to be, in my opinion, one of the highest and one of the more uh, likely players to be in the Calder conversation this next year, but in the NCAA, in 37 games, got 20 goals, 23 assists, 43 points, and looked, in my opinion, absolutely elite with Seattle, and I don't use that word lightly, in the 10 games that he played, where in, th in 10 games he got 3 goals, 6 assists for 9 points, not even just the points, the way he was playing, the pace that he was pushing was unbelievable, and to me, this is a player that's going to be, in my opinion, maybe my Calder vote for next year, just brings such an amazing two-way game, and the ability to get into tight spaces, to work and make high danger chances happen. It's such an effortless thing for him, and I think he's going to be a great first line center for the Kraken for the next decade and a half. But now going on to the first spot and the best prospect in the in the entire NHL right now, just barely ahead of Matty Beneers, and I mean just barely. Let's go on to the first overall pick in 2021 in Owen Power, who I think also had to show some improvements in the NCAA this last year, and I think really did. I mean, he was ranked second overall by me, and again, just barely but when the 2021 draft happened. But he has shown a lot that I think has improved his pro projectability and his projectability to be a superstar, which I think is the case. And you consider how many other Sabres prospects are in the top 30, and it's just crazy to see what their future is. And in my opinion, they still have the best prospect pool in the NHL. But you see those stats in the University of Michigan in 33 games. He got three goals, 29 assists, 32 points. And I thought it looked pretty solid in the games he did play for the Sabres. In eight games, got two goals, one assist, three points. To me, he brought a lot more of a, of a consistent defensive game. Wasn't getting beat nearly as much on the rush which was a big factor, I think, in his, in, his, in his freshman year in the NCAA. And you combine that with that booming shot and that just so natural offensive ability. And to me, this is a guy that if he's able to round out his defensive game even more, if he's able to get even more comfortable on his feet, could become one of the best defensemen in the entire NHL. But that'll be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you did enjoy, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Comment down below, what do you guys think of my list? What do you disagree? What do you, what do you agree? What do you disagree with? And let me know in the comments down below, what would your top prospects be right now in the entire NHL? Let me know your thoughts down below. Of course, share this video with your friends. Get it to all the hockey fans you guys know online. Click this card for all my hockey prospects. Talk right in one playlist. My name is Nathan. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.